Hello guys, this is Master Davis here and um I've been away for a while, been basically on holiday and um I'm really excited to um post this video here about my impressions. On um basically basically Able 4 and um I'm spawn rank 130 now so I um, I can now tell my I can tell you guys my impressions and why I think Halo 4 is better than basically some of the past Halos. So like Halo Reach, obviously, Halo Halo 3, Halo 2, yeah, and Halo 1. And, um, I know there's some problems with multiplayer, but multiplayer isn't exactly perfect yet, but it will be as soon as the competitive playlist comes out, um, this Monday, and, um, and as soon as the title update comes out the week after the Monday, so get the majestic map pack, then Halo 4 will be perfect. Um, so yeah, the title update is basically fix most of the problems and we will be happy. Well, everybody should and I'm hopefully everybody will come back. But anyway, first things first, why um, Halo 4 campaign is my favorite of all. Basically, um, basically it's like Halo 1. Halo 1 you were introduced to this like all new galaxy that you never know about which is known as the Halo universe. You're fighting against Covenant at first, which is something brand new. You never, per you never probably heard of these Covenant, and then you fight against the Blood, all new enemies, and um, yeah, and nothing, nothing being new. You didn't fight against any new enemies. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Sentinels. You also fight against Sentinels and Halo One, Two, Three, and um, um, yeah, there's um, haven't been many new enemies, um. Until Halo 4. Halo 4 was the game that introduced for Prometheans, and um, Halo 4 felt against like Halo 1. You fight against new enemies, and um, you don't know, well, you don't exactly know what their tactics are, what they do, how much damage they can do, what strategies are best against these enemies. So the Prometheans basically um, was like fine for Covenant and the Flood in Halo 1. Like, you don't know what strategies are the best at first. At first, at least. So after a few missions, you'll find out that the um, Forerunner Promethean be weapons are basically the best. I guess um, I realized that the Promethean weapons in the campaign are most effective, so that includes the light rifle, suppressors, also very effective bolt shot against the crawlers and the watchers. Um, the incineration cannon, kind of the scatter shot, well, they're more effective than the UNSC weapons and the, um, and most of the Covenant weapons. Yeah, I mean, I mean, most of the UNSC weapons, like the assault rifle, DMR, VR, the more effective than those. For example, the light rifle was a more effective in the campaign against the Prometheans. So, um, yeah, it's basically added a new taste in the universe against finally finding against brand new enemies known as the Prometheans. Don't know what they're up to or how uh, how tough are they. So, um. It's basically a new experience, and um, we have now we know now how to deal with these guys, and it's still for me it's still very fun fighting against them. Um, still very fun for me fighting against these um, Prometheans. It's very fun and also very challenging, especially when Watchers and the Knights are together with the Crawlers as well. Very challenging indeed, more challenging than fighting against the Elites or Flood even. Yeah, it's more challenging than the Flood, so it's um, pretty cool, that's why it's enjoyable um, fighting against them, in my opinion. And also in the campaign, um, unlike over, unlike over, um, unlike over campaigns in the past, it's been, um, the story has been very clear to understand, you basically understood, it's easy to understand the whole um, game through what's going on and blah 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 blah. The story, unlike V over Halos, it was a bit more complicated in Halo 3 and Halo 2. Um, Halo 1, well, really, well, mostly in Halo 2 and Halo 3, it was very complicated. Um, from uh, some bits, you like, know, okay, how does this happen? For example, at least, um, so yeah, um, is there anything else? Also, um, yeah, the, the graphics are also in Halo 4 much better. The guns, oh yeah, the guns sound more realistic as well, um, unlike other Halos. I know it's like in the future, like five years since Halo 3 and, um, two years since Halo Reach, but still, had to be said. Um, and also, um, 
New stuff have been introduced. New stuff as well, new weapons. Brand new weapons from the enemies to use. So they basically made Halo very new again compared to the other Halos. Like more stuff or new apart from stuff. Like more stuff and uh, also new music was introduced in the campaign, more themes to listen to and enjoy while playing. Unlike um CN's Halo 1, they had the same themes all the way through to Halo 3, most of the part at least. Um, so yeah, it's nice to hear a little change. So it's like a brand new experience making Halo all new again new experience. And um uh, And yeah, and, and basically in the campaign it was going more into detail of the story. That's what I like. It was going more in detail and um and now we come to the multiplayer. Multiplayer, I don't have many problems with. Lots of people do, however, that's why they're not playing it, they're playing now Halo Reach and Halo 3. They can continue complaining, but I don't care if they complain, they can fucking complain. But it's pretty annoying that they say Halo 4 is the worst Halo. Well, it's nowhere near to be the worst Halo. Nowhere near. Like, people say that the campaign... People just say... Uh, the campaign is horrible for graphics. Like some idiot said that Halo Reach graphics had better gr um, graphics than Halo 4, and they didn't like they didn't like the Prometheans. They didn't like the new look of the elites. Come on, things have to change, and it's nice to fight new enemies. And these two new enemies do look cool. And, um, they look cool, and um, yeah, the multiplayer. Why I like the multiplayer? Well, I like the multiplayer because it's brand new. There might be a few problems like a bolt shot glitch, but DMR is faster than the others. And um, yeah, join in progress and instant respawn. I might not like them. Um, I don't really mind ordnance drops. They'll only be featured in like Infinity Slayer now, in Infinity Slayer game types, but um. They won't be in other game types, and they definitely won't be in the new competitive mode coming out um, on the same week as episode 10 of Spawn Ops, which is gonna be brilliant. So, so most of you probably be sold there, you know, ordinance as well. Um, people didn't like the new changes in the game, for example, the custom classes, but then also the perks. They didn't like the perks, for example, of some of the new guns. Guns like they have lots of guns. They want they wanted some guns removed, absolutely removed from the games, and they didn't. They just basically didn't like changes. So many changes to the game, so I can't take the changes. But the thing is, Halo would eventually become like Call of Duty, like the same, like Call of Duty has the same stuff in multiplayer every single year. No, not many differences at all. Not many changes like in every new Call of Duty and um, Halo would eventually become like that um, but Halo would um, would like hold on it won't get that um, boring as fast as Call of Duty would um, is um, it would take I'll get my guess it would be another three another two or three Halo games uh, no another another um, Halo game or two, let's just say two, don't matter. You know, number pick, um, the game would just get boring of the same stuff. It would be like Call of Duty, um, brand new. So yeah, I added like the new stuff. Halo Reach added the armor abilities uh, to, to make Halo different. You have make it make it different. Quite nice. But Halo 4 is a big game where they had to changes to basically basically improve the game and make it new again. I mean, it would definitely become like Call of Duty eventually, like boring. The game needs to change in order to um, survive. The franchise needed to survive. So it needed these changes. Don't know why people can't see that. A lot of people can't see that. It needs to change. And some people just don't like the changes. Well, then, um, yeah, you don't like the changes, you can play some different game types apart from the Finny Slayer. Just like to, for example, you order to go to some different game types. And, um, yeah, when the competitive playlist comes out, if you don't like any of these custom loadouts or DMR, bolt shot, whatever, hell, perks, just go to the competitive playlist when it comes out.
go there and enjoy Halo 4. Wanted to be more competitive. I'm personally gonna be playing a competitive um, game type when it comes out. Pretty excited for that. Wanna see how well I do. I'm quite a decent player, so I think I should do quite well in the most part. And um, yeah, that's it for multiplayer. My problem with multiplayer is the re recent, um, no, the uh, instant respawn. Sometimes, um, if you play, for example, doubles, double system, in Phoenix Slayer, double system, quite common one. You kill two teammates, and then it's like only just one teammate. Um, yeah, you kill one teammate, and this um, one of the teammates is still left alive. You want to clear him up, but the teammate who you just killed might um, just spawn. Will instant replon and he'll spawn right next to um your teammate and then he can take you out. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair. Your shield can't um, reload. Um, yeah, they can't reload. Or they um or they instant respawn and also join in progress. Um, it has a good. Um, basically, it's not that bad, but. One minute. It has a good win. thing about it and a bad thing. The bad thing is, um, you don't want to join a team that is losing. The good thing is, um, if you're alone against like a whole team, it's good to have some teammates to join you and help you out. Um, that's the good Closing thing. Closing in on thing victory. So yeah, nothing we can really do about it. New hill available. About the um, joining progress, it has a good thing and a bad thing. So I don't think they'll remember that from the game, but I think they just want to be there. But trying to focus on the game. And um, let me come to the spawn ups. Basically, spawn ups. Is, um, I like, I love spawn ups. Basically. I've been loving it. <laughs> just love it. And um, we're gonna get to the spawn ups um, menus now. Um, Oh, stuff. I basically love it so far. It has an excellent continuation of story for people who enjoy joy campaign or fans of campaigns to um, basically enjoy spawn ups. It's like a it's like an after story of a campaign. It's set in six months after the campaign, and you can um, basically enjoy um, a continuation of story. And spawn ups will lead to the um, beginning of Halo 5, and it actually did already. There's some, been some clues, which I'll show in a bit. So basically, um, Spawn Ups has been very enjoyable, even in the first half. So overall, basically, I'll give Spawn Ups a 9 out of 10 from so far. What we have seen, I'll explain why. But first, we're gonna go to, um, to, um, to the first half of Spawn Ups. And, yeah, how it did. Basically, um, when Spawn Ops came out, I really enjoyed the first episode of it. It was like, um, new maps that we haven't seen in the campaign. Um, so I enjoyed playing on those and, um, killing Covenant and Prometheans lovers in the campaign. And the stories were continued and I really love the cutscenes. The cutscenes are like... Like five minutes of cutscene. Oh, the, uh, the cutscenes are like five minutes, and you can just sit back and enjoy them and listen, and you can know about the story. And then you can go to the missions and enjoy them. And um, the first half was really fun, but after, let's say, episode three, episode four, and episode five, especially, it got pretty boring. Um, it wasn't that boring, the gameplay was still kind of nice, but. You didn't enjoy, enjoy it as much as episode 3 and episode 1, for example. Um, because it wasn't new anymore, nothing was fresh anymore. It was, um, they kept reusing the same maps like before, all were old maps. Nothing new, just a few different objectives. So nothing much changed, but... Um, then people, it made people disappointed. Lots of people said um, Firefight was better, I still thought Sparnos was better. But even now, people say that they want Firefight to return instead of Spawn Ops. They think Firefight is more enjoyable and Spawn Ops use too many repetitive maps, which is, I think, is stupid. I'll explain. And Firefight is more exciting and less boring than Spawn Ops. Um, I don't think so. I'll explain that in a second. 
anyway, we come to episode 6, the return of Sparnops. Everybody was happy to see these brand new maps. And also this map, I mean, this gameplay was linked to the cutscenes, like, very much linked. So the cutscenes were like in the past, mostly, and then you come to be after the cutscenes. Um, so basically, you st um, the second half started off um, really well. It had um, They brought in some campaign animations, for example, in the first chapter, Crimson Team were held up locked in some prison and you could see like your spawn teammates and your hands are like clung to the walls and some campaign animations they added in which you don't see every day new maps awesome gameplay just brilliant the gameplay and all five of these maps were awesome and it was it was really enjoyable having you um having a refreshment new maps and shit and also um it wasn't a big change, but it's not like any more clicking buttons all the time, like in the first half. Um, it was like, you know, like campaign missions. You fight your way through place until you reach the end. Especially in Lock Up, um, Chapter 3 and Chapter 5. In chapter 5, they introduced a new covenant vehicle called the Harvester. Many people hope that the Harvester might be a boss battle in Episode 10. It might actually be a boss battle, but it, it might be- it's actually similar to the Scarab, so you can use a Scorpion, it might be using a Scorpion to take it out, and stuff like that. Um, then we come to episode 7, the maps were brand new again, um, bra all brand new again, the maps all new again. It, um, and in episode 2, they already used, they already used the um, same maps like before, completely the same, and um, Episode 7 had new maps again. So we first start in Apex, which is um, a Halo 1 feeling map. <coughs> like campaigns, and you go to Infinity, which is um, from a campaign. You were Infinity in a campaign, but these are new areas. Uh, you never been these areas in um, the campaign, for example. So it was exciting, and the gameplay was awesome. You had to. There was no clicking buttons, he was like, there was like some objective like disarming nukes and um, activating guns and um, just cleaning out enemies, so waves of Prometheans and um, and stuff, yeah. So yeah, um, episode 8, this was from the least favorite episode so far because all the maps were reused and it was like, you know, chapter... They were all like chapter, um, not chapter, um, for first half of season 1 style where you have to click buttons and just five of waves and waves of enemies. So apart from chapter 5, chapter 5 was like the only one which was pretty cool. Um, then we come to episode 9. The first two were like, you know, completely used maps, but there were some twists. Twists. And um, episode 3, 4, and 5, well... It was different. There was the same maps, but there was lots of different stuff. I'll talk about them in a second. First of all, here you fight in some area against waves of Prometheans, and in the end, Sentinels appeared for the first time spawn ups, which is quite cool. That's why it made this one significant. Chapter 2 You were in control. You were in the map control, um, fighting against elites. And waves of Promethean Knights, especially, which made it, which made the gameplay lots of fun, even though it was on the same map. It's still lots of fun. In the end, you have to escape, and there's like hundreds of knights appear, and the whole map blows up. Well, the foreign structure blows up, and I think that's um, the end of Control. You might probably never see Control ever again. And then we come to Apex. It's a similar map, but you start off with a, with a scorpion and you drive through the whole map exploring new areas of this map so there's new areas available as soon as you enter like some mysterious cave which is open um, so yeah you basically explore new areas leading to a big foreign instruction um, structure where you have to deal against them um, few raves and prometheans um, and uh, of course covenant then we come to these two last bits you come and lock up um, yeah, so you basically come in, you fight your way through in the same old areas that you've been, and then you open the door and you're outside of a map to a different area, like grassy, and you can and you can see a big jungle ahead, but you can't go there. Um, 
And you fight a few Wraiths vehicles and you help some Marines fight Prometheans and... Chapter 5 you start in a place where you um... <coughs> finish Dothan and then you get back inside the structure and you... Find a teleporter or yeah, teleporter that leads you upstairs to the roof of a structure. And then you um... Yeah, you basically um... Fight off elites and a few Prometheans and activate some stuff to find a little secret map. But in all of all of these um all these episodes are linked to the cutscenes. Like um in episode seven in the cutscene um it showed that the Infinity was being attacked by Prometheans and then Crimson have to come back to Infinity to help out. Eight well it's just casual like ep like the first half I told you already. Episode nine basically Dr. Holsey was captured and then F um, Fireteam Majestic come in to save her um, but she has been and Dr. Holsey meets up with a librarian she gives Dr. Holsey a key to the secret of all foreigner stuff but Julian Dama takes half of the key and Dr. Holsey throws the other half of the key to Forn and um, especially and um, later um, Julian Dama just um, escapes with Dr. Holsey again and in this episode you have to you have to search her in all of these areas where a signature come from but um as soon as you reach episode 5, not episode 5, chapter 5, and um, basically she's gone. She's been taken away. Chapter 5, you're too late, and um, episode 10, the trailer's come up, and there's been lots of interesting stuff. It's gonna be end with a huge cliffhanger, and it's gonna be freaking amazing, I know that. Um. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be amazing, you're gonna... It shows that, um, people say a Requiem's gonna explode. I, f I do think that, because Julum Dunn will activate, like, some, um, button, like, some structure, and, it's, and it says, um, that, um, it's gonna end the... Explo it's gonna be an explosive end, so Requiem's gonna explode, because Julum Dunn is going to, um use something to explode it and at the end as soon as Julum Dama activates something you see the didact symbol lots of people think that he's alive and I also do think the, uh, the didact is alive and um, you see the didact symbol as soon as Julum Dama activates it so the didact might come back and it will be Requiem's end and if there is gonna be a season 2 it's gonna be featured outside Requiem which is gonna be cool I wonder how that's gonna go. Free for free are doing a really good job of its game and now to the annoying bit people say Firefly is better than this. <sighs> no, it's not better than Sparnoffs. These are my um arguments against it. Because um basically people say that Sparnoffs reuses so many maps, but let's say um Firefight has like only ten maps maximum to play on and it gets boring like fighting against waves and waves of covenant only totally over and over again. It's like boring and it gets dull, like doing the same thing. In Halo Reach, I only played like a f like f two firefight games, one, um, like firefight um, matches twice per month, and I play this like every week. And um, I played like most of these chapter, most of these episodes three times through, which is so I played. <coughs> Sorry, so I played um, basically spawn ups more than I did with Firefight in the entire time I played Halo Reach. So it's pretty cool, but look, let me count off now for spawn ups maps. Um, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, nothing else. <laughs> Okay, um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, we are ready past the mark, um, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay, nothing here, um, 19, 20, we have 20 maps, that is twice as much as, uh, no wait, actually 21, because there's new areas in these three old maps. So it has more well I know this video is wrong. Uh, more maps than firefight and plus it gets dull these maps don't the story to spawn up. There's freaking story and it's for free. All of this is for free. 10 episodes, 50 chapters, 10 cutscenes. Jesus Christ.
it obviously it's much better than firefight and this um lots of story and um it's not just fighting against waves of covenant you do everything in here it's like a campaign it's a, just a campaign hey anyway, i'm done with this here um i hope you enjoy my country and um Expect me to release a Sparnops review on whole of season 1. And um, I can tell you already I'm gonna give it a very good review. It depends on episode 10. If episode 10 is really good, I'll give it a 10 out of 10 instead of a 9 out of 10. But if episode 10 uses like re um uses quite a bit of um reused maps, then it might be a 9 out of 10 anyway. I'm sure the gameplay will be awesome as well, and I hope there might be a boss battle against the harvester. Because that's a new vehicle, we only seen it once, but it is confirmed it's a covenant vehicle. And um, I'm sure there's more of these harvesters out there, so yeah. And um, I'm gonna do episode 10 um, recap as a review as well, and a season 1 recap, and um, yeah. And also, you can expect some gameplay on Team Throwback, which is the new competitive playlist. Well, adios.